Have you ever wanted to know how Hollywood movies bring full-size dinosaurs to life? I know I have. Join us as we figure out how to bring our very own DIY living, breathing dinosaur to life for our annual home haunt. Nothing I ever design or build has a very linear approach, especially when I'm trying to create something and use technologies and techniques I've never used before. What am I talking about? This is all new to me. Making this up as I go along. And this process was no different. With the ups. Happy with that. I love it when a plan comes together. The downs. Everything else today has been a nightmare. I'm gonna take a breath. Of any maker trying to tackle a new project. That was much harder than it needed to be. As the tagline of our channel suggests, we're all about exploring, experiencing, and creating, which often means getting inspiration from others' amazing work that we see on our adventures and recreating it here at home. For this build, we took inspiration from the raptors in containment in Jurassic World, recreated for an up-close and personal experience as part of the Velocicoaster ride in Universal Studios. But how on earth do we make the step from experiencing something in a theme park in Orlando to bringing it to life in our own garage? In order to help better understand the journey I took, I've tried to break this process down into the following steps. The design and armature of the dinosaur, its eyes and animatronics, the electronics and coding that go to support it, making and painting the skin, building the stock to contain the dinosaur, and finally, bringing it all together with set, lighting, and sound. In this, the first of this series of videos, I'm gonna focus on the design and armature. The plan is to make the base out of this foam here. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, start to measure out the foam and um, draw out the shape of the head in two dimensions. And then the idea is to cut it into sections. So I've got multiple pieces um, and then stick those sections together um, in order to create the, the general shape. But the idea of doing this is that there'll be a combination. This will form some of the external shell, so it will be the outside as well, but it will also contain the animatronics. And then there'll be some kind of opening for the eye um, to enable the animatronics to sit in there. So it kind of forms the substructure and the exterior at the same time. That's my idea. We'll see, we'll see if it works. The exercise of drawing um, a raptor is quite interesting because it starts to help you figure out kind of the shapes that you're looking for and what it is that you're trying to do. So this is uh, what I have right now, the side and the front, and I need to figure out the dimensions. And what's quite helpful is I have this epic book, Making of Jurassic Park, and it has some really, really great imagery of raptors in relation to people. You kind of get a rough idea on what I think these sizes are gonna be, then apply these to my images and then start to figure out how I'm gonna slice that up and break it down into those segments that I'm gonna make out of foam to help me um, carve it. So this image here is super helpful because it shows the forearm in relation to the head. So it worked out that my forearm with a clenched fist, like in the image, is around 14 inches, a little bit longer. And then I converted that down, <laughs> measured it on this picture, and then upscaled it. So I think it's 22.4 inches is the length from the back of the head to the front of the head of the raptor. So let's go, um, oh, you know what? I haven't done the width. <laughs> Better do that next. Okay. Roughly done on the grid. Now I've got to transfer it. Easy. <laughs> like everything I do, uh, it always takes so much longer than I expect. Okay, I think that's a good start. To do this, I used a simple hot wire cutting tool that we bought off Amazon. It'll be in the link below, but it has this thin wire. Um, and then these two other tools, this long pokey one and uh, this uh, kind of hook shape, both of which were very useful. And then they just uh, sit, sit in the tool like this and then you plug that into power and allow it to heat up. Yeah. 
Yep, that's it. I think that's the right width. So now, I need to glue these together. The tough bit. I'm gonna start carving this. Trying to make it look more like a 3D dinosaur. I've got some reference material on my iPad. Let's give it a go. later and there is a lot of mess <laughs> on the floor here but we do have the beginnings of a very good raptor head very pleased with that it's, uh, it's coming together there's a lot still to do but um I'm really pleased with it as you can see progress has been made i've had a few chances to um play with uh, play with this again never done this carving out um, a foam before one thing you may notice there are some seams that are popping open from where I glued this together it glued really well and has been holding itself pretty well together and I started carving this side in detail but then I needed to carve this side in detail and you'll see this huge huge hole here that looks like a spray mark well you'll be right it is a spray mark I thought I could get some spray glue in this little gap which I, I did manage to do but it has melted. I'm guessing that glue has a reasonable amount of solvent in it that's going to do that. So note to self, once you've started carving, spraying is a poor idea. And actually, probably the reason that some of these gaps have opened up or appear to have opened up is that when I pressed the pieces of foam together, where there was more glue or more solvent than in other places, it probably glued and then melted apart. One final thing, so you will have seen me using the, the hot wire to cut this, which is great for the big pieces, but um, I found it wasn't as good for getting into small details uh, like here, and so I've been using this little Dremel or um, equivalent little rotary tool uh, as a way to do that. But the, the challenge is that dust gets everywhere, so whether you're cutting the foam with a hot wire or whether you're using this, masking is is an important part of this and I'm gonna be itchy, and I'm gonna feel uncomfortable, and I'm gonna get this done. Progress has been made using all the tools I have at my disposal to get this broadly to the point that it's gonna be before we put some kind of skin over the top of it. So yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with the mouth. The thing that I still don't know how I'm gonna quite do yet is figure out how to get these eyeballs completely in line with each other. I'm gonna actually have to carve out a huge area here, like a skull hole, that I can put the operational pieces inside. They've got to be made animatronic, so there's got to be space for the animatronics. Making this up as I go along. The big question in my head right now is what on earth do I choose to do next? What do you think, Max? Whoa, that looks awesome. What do you think, Peaches? No input from those judges. What do you think? It's cool. Positive vibes from the kids. Now I'm gonna go wreck it, cut a hole in it. I measured it, totally right. I love it when a plan comes together. It is so satisfying when you take your time and measure something out. Look at that. It's like the channel tunnel. 
Both sides met where they needed to. Well, hello there. In part two, it's all about the eyes. Printing, painting, and mechanics. Click on the video link below to watch now. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button below and hit the notify bell. It helps me make more of these videos and means you get notified when we share our next exciting adventure.